Well, at the time of this recording, the full extent of COVID-19's impact has yet to be determined. But for now, the spread of this virus has affected the practices and livelihoods of millions of people across the globe. Several announcements have been made that give us an idea of how this might affect the anime dubbing industry moving forward, and remote recording via the internet looks like it'll play a part in that. After all, various other institutions have adapted to online classes or conferences to mitigate the virus's spread, and even my job has me doing that for the time being. But first, a disclaimer for these types of videos. While we try to confirm a lot of what we talk about with professionals and other verifiable sources, we are aware that these are ongoing issues that we cannot provide conclusive answers to right now. So please be sure to check the pinned comment or video description for any corrections or updates to the situations discussed in this video. Alternatively, if you happen to be a working voice actor watching this, please let us know if there's anything we missed or how you're getting by in this situation. But with all that said, what has happened so far? Uh, my name is Jonah Scott. I'm a voice actor, singer, sound designer, video game voice actor, anime, you know, you know the drill. Video games are fine for the most part. TV shows, that needs to, kind of, like, things that are ADR period are gonna have to be put on hold. Well, on March 25th, the co-creator of Toonami, Jason DeMarco, posted that the quarantine will definitely affect the delivery of several Toonami shows. While everyone will be working from home, marathons and reruns will probably take up space on the block when shows finish or when they are unable to receive new materials from licensors. If other shows on the block like Demon Slayer have already finished recording and post-production, then it's possible that we can at least see the ends of those dubs on the platform. However, I cannot verify just how far along these dubs are production-wise, and it's going to be harder for Toonami or any other streaming platform to air other dubs unless they've already been completed. On March 18th, Funimation announced that they would be temporarily delaying the production of their seasonal simul dubs while also making, quote, necessary changes to the simul dub production and release schedule, although their subtitle anime will still air on their platform without delay. Kageya-sama Love is War will have its second season air on Funimation in sub, with a dub for both seasons forthcoming due to the company's continued ties with Aniplex of America. Who knows, maybe if we're lucky this could mean that dubs for Aniplex's other non-action shows are also being considered. However, in light of the circumstances, it's unknown when the dub for Kaguya-sama will air, how it will be recorded, or if it'll even be a simul dub. This might have been a similar situation to what happened with shows like Tokyo Ghoul and how season 2 aired as a simul dub before the first season was released in English. However, with the aforementioned production and release schedule changes, we may end up getting this dub and others like it later than intended. Regardless, they did release the first dubbed episode of Listeners, as it's implied that this was recorded well before the delay was put in place. According to ADR director Caitlin Glass, we know that the first season of the Fruits Basket remake was recorded quite far in advance as well, but we aren't certain if that trend continued for the second season, or for how long if at all. On March 27th, Crunchyroll put out a similar announcement regarding the dubs for Inspector, Science Fell in Love So I Tried to Prove It, Somali, and Orumakun, claiming that there will be a pause on the dub releases for these shows after certain episodes have aired, while also confirming that the dub release for the Konosuba movie will be paused for the time being. Not sure if this means that the production will be paused, or if the release date will just be pushed back, or both. On March 31st, High Dive announced that they will be postponing the dub, or dubcast, of Ahiru no Sora as of episode 20, and any future dubcast titles until further notice to preserve the health and well-being of their employees. On April 11th, Funimation posted a brief clip about how their home dubbing is being handled for My Hero Academia episode 84, which will be linked in the description. It appears the main cast are provided with special dub kits to help with their home recording. As of writing this, it isn't specified how much of that episode was recorded from home, how many actors have been provided with these kits, or whether their other dub projects will have actors working with these kits as well. We'll also have to wait and see if this is used for the dubs that haven't yet started, such as Gleipnir and Apare Ranman, or if focus will be placed upon finishing the dubs that have already been delayed. However, Donald Schultz recently posted that Stephen Fu just finished recording his lines for the dub of Oshibudo, which is recorded at Okatron 5000. Funimation has a lot of regular actors, so outfitting literally all of them with these kits seems like a steep endeavor, but we'll see what happens. The big question is probably whether they can use this method to get back to their normal simul dubbing schedule. In recent years, they've been simul dubbing about 15 shows per season most of the time. Will we see a new quote normal emerge when it comes to releasing dubs recorded from home? Most of these announcements seem to be coming from the western side of things, but Japan might also not be too far behind. <laughs> 
voice actress Midori Kato reportedly stated that Saza-san, one of the longest-running animated programs in history where she voices the titular character, has halted voice recording sessions indefinitely due to concerns over COVID-19, with something similar occurring for the voiceover sessions of Anpan Man. All while anticipated shows like Season 2 of Ray Zero, Season 3 of my teen romantic comedy Snafu, and Season 2 of No Guns Life have been postponed until further notice, with more delays expected to pop up. Even movie screenings like the third Heavensfield movie and Violet Evergarden have been delayed worldwide for an undisclosed period of time, as environments that promote large gatherings continue to close down for the sake of social distancing. It's possible that other companies will be just as cautious moving forward with similar announcements forthcoming. But perhaps the reason why they haven't made any official statements yet is because everyone is trying to figure out what's the best way to keep things running with the lowest potential risk. Closing a studio's doors can be a hard call when it means putting people out of work, although it's important for everyone's safety. We as voice actors spend a lot of time spitting into a pop filter, breathing the same air as somebody that has been in a booth for up to two, three, four hours at a time. The microphones themselves can't be sanitized unless you have, you know, the right UV lighting and things like that because you can't, you can't spray Lysol on a microphone. It's just, I, as a sound designer, it hurts my heart to hear that people would do that. We understand some people might find this frustrating on the western side of things, but we can't forget that Texas, California, and New York, the three main states that record anime dubs, are all under strict shelter-in-place orders, and actors could experience fines or jail time from law enforcement if they left their homes to do something considered non-essential like going to the studio to dub anime. I mean, as much as we talk about them on this channel, dubbing anime isn't considered essential work, and it's important that we prioritize community safety during these hard times. Even if a lot of actors don't have a risk of dying from the virus, COVID-19 can still severely damage the lungs which are pertinent for voice actors to maintain their careers and livelihoods. And of course, there's the risk of passing the disease on to more vulnerable friends and loved ones. Currently, it's unknown how long it'll take for things to resume on schedule as they have been before. And even though we think the safety of the staff are more important than receiving dubs on an expected timeline, it'll be interesting to see how everyone tries to work around these production handicaps. Is that information really necessary? You can tell me. If the information is accurate, then having more won't hurt. The main solution to having dubs continue their schedules seems to be remote recording, having cast members record via Skype or Source Connect with the director and engineers in call. Like we mentioned in a previous video, these methods are already used so that actors can record for a show at local studios without needing to travel all the way to a different state to the main studio the dub is being recorded at. A lot of actors already record for projects remotely like this, such as when they're reprising a role for a sequel years after moving to a different location, or for small bits of recording that need to be done while the actor is out of town or on holiday. Honestly, a lot of us hope that this would end up becoming the industry standard. Although now, it might have to become the standard, at least for a while. It's hard to deny that amazing vocal talent exists all over the English-speaking world, and the fact that these actors might be unable to play characters they could absolutely ace just because of where they live can be a shame. Besides, not only is remote work beneficial for people with disabilities or those who can't move house due to their financial situation, but it could also allow for more unique casting decisions as well as for dubs to no longer sound ubiquitous with the region they're being dubbed in, granting more opportunities to cast the best person for each role without needing to worry about location. Two of those aforementioned dubbing states, LA and New York, are pretty expensive to live in, while dubbing work typically pays low. If remote recording becomes more accepted, it could lower that bar for getting more actors from all over into dubbing if they want to, or are able to work with this remote system. According to actors that we've spoken with, Source Connect is pretty good to work with if the studio's internet is set up well, but there can be a bit of latency with it. This can make the process go a little slower, but given too much latency for too long, that will end up piling up over a multiple hour recording session. Not to mention that now you'd have to pay the other studio and its staff such as additional audio engineers for their time, which could double or triple the price of recording an out-of-towner over Source Connect, as well as potentially paying both them and the talent for an extra hour or two should things go over time. Not to mention that, in this specific circumstance, using other studios doesn't negate the risk of infection that probably contributed to why companies like Funimation are putting their dubs on hold at their in-house studios. Speaking of in-house, actors can dub from their actual houses, where those extra studio rental costs aren't an issue, and it would be easier to have as minimal physical contact with people as possible, all while complying with shelter-in-place lockdown procedures. After all, a lot of professional actors already have their own at-home audio setups where they record auditions, commercials, movie trailers, audiobooks, and indie projects. 
Just last year at Anime Expo, I went to a Bang Zoom panel and the studio's main casting director, Mami Okada, mentioned that a few of their actors already record from home anyway, if their audio setup and recording spaces are good enough. In fact, according to Jalen Cassell, the ADR director for Eruma-kun, which was being recorded at Bang Zoom, the cast and crew are actually trying to continue working on the series remotely. However, in spite of some teams being able to make this work, not every individual actor may be as prepared. So let's talk about that. We always envisioned what we'd be like in the future. The people we'd become, they took shape. <sighs> Our recording space sucks. Not every actor and actress records using the same programs. While most actors might not have the right setup for this to progress seamlessly in the first place, some actors record from home on programs like Audacity or Adobe Audition, and we need to get used to utilizing Pro Tools with a multi-screen setup, theoretically to make remote anime dubbing run as smoothly as possible, unless a workaround was found. This is important for dub acting in particular, which requires the performances to sync up with visuals, and some actors are more equipped to deal with the technicalities of that than others. Voice actors do more than anime dubs, most of the time. Uh, the odds are they do video games, and they do commercials, and a lot of other things don't, don't require you to be in sync or doing ADR. Now that's about two-thirds of our job. And uh, while it is a, a significant amount, losing a third of your income is, 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 is also very significant. It's possible that there are other alternative programs, and an actor could get by with just one screen. But from what we've been told, these programs and equipment setups are expected as the industry standard. This is why anime dubbing was traditionally not done from home, and relied on studios that accommodated such a setup. Then, to involve directors, you need to be able to patch them in. Skype with screen share on can work if your internet connection, again, is good. But if not, you're looking at a director sitting down for several sessions in a day and experiencing technical difficulties or going overtime. Obviously, you can see how the workday they're used to would break down after a while, especially since directors would need to do this for multiple actors who might be facing similar issues on potentially tight deadlines, if they're working on a simuldub. After all, according to our sources, Funimation's simuldub recording schedules are usually packed tight throughout a day, with one expected to start right after the other in order to get everyone in before the episode needs to go off to mix. Wiggle room for going over time sometimes just isn't there. Then there's NDAs or non-disclosure agreements. This is handled differently between companies, but then there are some like Netflix that are super protective of their properties. So the idea of them mailing out the footage and a copy of the script to record with from home is pretty unlikely. The only person they might want working from home is maybe the scriptwriter. For everyone else, they'll want them to come to a controlled environment like the studio where only one trusted contractor such as the director or engineer has all the confidential materials on one computer. So that way they can just show them to the actors instead of of giving them copies. While there are some studios and ADR teams who have earned enough trust with the Japanese clients to work without oversight, there are still instances where producers might want to observe how recordings are being conducted in person. Although, provided scheduling goes well and there isn't too much latency, they could also give their input on performances and line reads through video calls, given that the difference in time zones could be worked out. Also, the spectrum of quality from online voice actors can span from amazing to dreadful. The Neumann mics that a lot of dubbing studios use are high-end and are very expensive. Experienced actors may have them at home, but it's only a worthwhile investment for an individual if they're positively committed to acting. So then why don't all voice actors just have the same kind of mics at home that the studios also use? Well, as many audio people will tell you, some mics just work better for different people. A deep male voice will sound better on a different mic to a high-pitched woman. And so, to get the best individual home setup possible and best sounding auditions without the support of the studio engineers, actors will probably look for what works best for them. For instance, the Shure KSM-42 is favored by some actresses with lower female voices, bringing out the lower frequencies and making them sound smoother. Whereas some dub actors also have microphones they use for other gigs they do from home, like being a radio jockey or streamer, that they can also use for their short auditions, and they might sound different. So while most actors have good home setups, many don't. Granted, when someone says dubbing over the internet, a bridge series are going to be the first thing to come to mind, as they've been recorded remotely since they started. Audio-wise, they began very rough, and some intermediate level ones nowadays still are. However, the better groups from the past few years can sound basically professional quality at times, using decent to good home setups. 
As you can probably tell though, my own knowledge of audio engineering isn't the best, but I suspect that official dubs unlike online fan dubs need to be recorded and mixed to accommodate home entertainment systems or cinemas, not just computers or earbuds. When it comes to what the official producers or clients want, it may be an issue of precise technical audio consistency along with good quality, the latter of which the stronger online parody groups definitely still have. Part of the reason why abridged quality has made such strides in the past decade is that higher tier groups like Team Four Star have gradually been able to upgrade their equipment and talent, but on occasion have actually rented professional studio spaces themselves. Another thing that you have to worry about when you're dubbing remotely is syncing to picture. That requires a lot of sync, a lot of effort on the engineer's part to make sure that everything lines up right, to make sure you're fitting the flaps. And that's a difficult job that requires professionals that know what they're doing in the lowest latency setting. Anime dub actors, as well as voice actors in general, come from different backgrounds. Some may be very audio savvy, knowing the ins and outs of engineering and equipment, but others aren't. In a studio context, it isn't their job to be the most knowledgeable about audio technicalities, even if it can definitely help. For instance, a recording engineer might know the best way to stand an actor in relation to the microphone, but that can be harder to manage when the actor and their microphone are in a different building altogether. This can be worked around by sending pictures, FaceTiming, etc. So it can go well, but in cases where it doesn't go well, then more time will have to be spent going back and forth, getting pickups and revisions, as something as simple as the actor being off mic can compromise a whole recording session's worth of audio, let alone if something more major is set up wrong. Engineers will probably be in these calls too, but instead of turning the knobs themselves, they'll be telling others how to turn the knobs themselves. So we are crowdsourcing information from other actors online and, and, and via text and phone call and streams and virtual panels and things like that, trying to learn from each other, figuring out what we're going to do. Home setups, in most cases, can be a good mic in a closet or room with sound treatment. In worst cases, the mic the actor has chosen may be less good or may not have its own room and may just be sitting out in the open with a foam box around it. Best case scenario, they may have a whisper room in their house with a professional quality microphone and audio interface. The latter can be a $10,000 plus investment that some may not be able to afford, not helped by the fact that it's harder to go out and get proper sound treatment or equipment from local stores due to the quarantine. If this ends up becoming a deciding factor, then it may impede actors who don't already have a good home setup. Even a lot of agents have actors don't need their own setup because they bring them into their own studio to record all their auditions. There's just some people that haven't needed to have a home setup who are very big name actors that haven't had to do anything from home. And that's not through any fault of their own. They've been just so damn good, they haven't needed it. They don't have to do anything from home because they know when they go into the booth that everything is going to be taken care of for them at the studio. That's how it's been for decades. The microphone used, the recording interface, or the size and sound treatment of the booth may affect the quality of how you sound to varying degrees. However, this can sometimes be worked around. Funimation claimed in their recent home recording video that their engineers have adapted for sound quality in over 30 different homes from My Hero Academia, episode 84, even though production teams have obviously tried to work around audio inconsistencies before all this. One example is Beat X. In audio commentaries for the dub, ADR director Jeremy Inman mentioned that the show was originally being dubbed at a home studio, but they couldn't get the audio to work out well and so ended up recording the rest of the show at Sound Cadence Studios instead. Yeah, I called in some favors, yeah. especially before we got to the fancy studio. Before we were recording this literally in Jimmy's media room, it was just we were running in a lot of popping issues, a lot of audio quality issues like you can imagine. We thought we could get away with it with music and effects, but... That's where Marissa came in. We finally turned to Marissa and said, let us use your studio. Yeah. To save this show. <laughs> Sound Caden Studios. That's where the, uh, the end result dub was mostly recorded. There is some old audio still in here, um, but it's, it's mixed real nice. I think it sounds real good. If you watch the dub for BDX, it's difficult to distinguish the old audio from what was recorded at the studio. It's possible to mask inconsistencies just by virtue of the volume of the background music that happens to be in the show, or by using effects that you might have already planned on applying to an actor's audio. But of course, not every scene has background music, and the appropriateness of when audio effects should be added need to reflect the situations present in the anime. You can't hide poor audio quality with an echo filter if the character isn't standing in an echoey space or perhaps having a flashback. And that's even assuming that the difference in audio quality is minor enough that it could be masked. Mix engineers can and do handle audio discrepancies, such as if two actors use similar sounding mics and sound treatments in their booth, but one booth might have different dimensions than the other. 
The hurdles of remote recording from home can be overcome, it's just that when they combine, it runs the risk of either having things taking longer than normal or having the opposite intended effect of recording with Skype and Source Connect. Which means that rather than an industry where any actor can participate, you instead have an industry that's only composed of actors who are able to make this all work out. And instead of the most talented actors rising to the top, you'd see those with the money or know-how to build the best home recording space possible getting exponentially further ahead. So long story short, it's possible that COVID-19 might not hamper how anime dubs are produced moving forward if this stuff can get sorted out. Other sections of the voiceover industry might already be putting things in place, and it's possible that we'll see an increase in actors upgrading or changing their home equipment to accommodate the demands of the industry. Likewise, the hurdles we mentioned may gradually dissipate as more and more people adapt. Regardless, if there's another solution or something we might not have considered in this video, the process is going to take more time. If they have that kind of time, and companies are willing to pay actors and the staff the extra money or give them more lenient deadlines and budgets, then it would be possible. But when it comes to Funimation in particular in the age of simuldubs, fan demand for dubs is arguably higher than ever. It's going to be much harder to meet those demands now, and even if they are somehow met, we hope it doesn't come at the expense of diminishing returns. Because then, potentially no one wins. We love our dubs as much as the next uncultured weeb. However, I really hope we can all agree that no localization is worth risking the spread of a pandemic. Nor is delivering a dub on time worth a lack of quality. Like we said, we'll do our best to update the pinned comment at the top of this video, as well as the description for any new updates or corrections that we might have missed. And again, if you happen to be a voice actor watching this, please let us know if there's anything we missed or how you're getting by in this situation. It'll be interesting to see which studios try to dub from home in the long run, which ones halt production, which ones try another solution, or if the actor pool shifts to accommodate. Remote recording has a lot of potential even beyond the current situation, but at least for now, we hope it can allow ADR actors and staff to carry on their work in safety. Because I know dubs and subs people have been at each other's throats for decades but for the next year you're protecting us we're protecting you we got to look out for each other hey everyone my name is aj i'm the co-founder of the cartoon cypher as well as the narrator and one of the main writers of this video wasn't fully planning to do a video this serious after that april fool's one but we don't always know how serious the world is going to get and if the situation continues to evolve then we might make a newer update video down the line Things are far from ideal, but as long as everyone is safe, then we'll do our best to get through it together. The Cartoon Cypher team are still working hard from home, practicing social distancing ourselves, and we'll continue to do our best to provide you guys with the type of informative content you expect from us. For this type of video in particular, we really appreciate the help from Marissa Lenti, Michael Schneider, Bryson Boggess, and Jonas Scott for their insight on such a layered topic. If you'd like to support us, please leave a like, share this video around whenever you can, and consider becoming a patron. Special thanks to Reagan Senpai, Spartacus, Marissa Lenti, A. Hoba, Seth Phillips, JR Pictures, Unknown Secret 1000, and all of our other patrons for supporting us already. This has been the Cartoon Cipher, and stay safe, everybody. Until next time.